Hello everyone, welcome back to the third episode of Once Upon a Time series that we are doing in regard to the history of pharmacology in order to celebrate the International Podcast Day this year 2023 which will be falling on 30th of September 2023. So, what do you expect in today's episode? I'm sure it wanna be a very different thing from all your expectations. Today, I am actually covering some historical glimpses and aspects of two important compounds. One gonna be the anti-muscarinic compound, all about atropine. So that will be revolving around the plant Balladona. And the second gonna be the historical aspect of the compound, anti-cholinesterase inhibitors and also reactivators. So I'm gonna cover the historical aspect of both the compounds. There will be few scientists which are not very famous, but yes, you should know. Since we are talking about the history, we will get to know about many new and different people who are who were involved in the historical contributions for the development and the use of these compounds in today's date, right? So let's get started. Welcome all to this Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology, and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you rarely find, and if there's a question hovering in your minds, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. So first and foremost, let's talk about Balladona. Balladona is also called as the solo nasi family plant. You know, there are many families in the botanical terms. We have plant families. So one of the families is the Solonaceae family and Balladona belongs to that family. It has historical and traditional importance. The preparations curated out of Balladona, they were used in many Hindu homes, that is in India, and families also, and they were also prescribed by the physicians. For certain age-old ailments, which are not very specific. Now, there was a known shrub, the night shade shrub. It was found in the Middle Ages during the Roman Empire. And this nightshade shrub, it was utilized in the preparation of a kind of a very long-acting toxic material. Yes, a poisonous compound. Due to this particular use of the curation of the toxic compound, the scientist Linus, L-I-N-N-A-E-U-S, Linus, he named this nightshade shrub as Atropa Balladona. That's very weird, right? But the, there is a logic behind this nomenclature. Let's get to know about it. Atropa term. It was derived from the Atropos. A-T-R-O-P-O-S. Atropos, which was a mythical religious fate in that time, which was actually thought of abandoning life. And you know, the nature of this nightshade shrub compound was toxic and poisonous. It was very deadly. So it was totally connected to the Atropos, which was a religious fate which abandons life. So the connection curated the term Atropa. Well, that is very interesting. So that is how the term Atropa came into being. And what about Balladona? Yes. Why Balladona? Well, Italian women, they used a kind of preparation of this particular nightshade plant for the cosmetic reason. And the reason was to dilate their pupils. That was a kind of visual adornment and appeal. And that is why the term came into being as Balladona. Bala means beautiful. Dona, I think something to be done with the eye. So when we combine Atropa with Balladona, the term and the plant name comes out to be Atropa Balladona. This is so interesting and wonderful age-old nomenclature of the plant Atropa Balladona. I'm sure you enjoyed this particular nomenclature. Let's get to know more about it. The alkaloids obtained from this plant, they are atropine and scopolamine. Chemically, what is atropine? Chemically, atropine is 
DL that is dextro and levohyoxiamine now this chemical compound is in actually certain amounts also found in the thura stramonium the thura stramonium is a plant that is found in india and its other name is jimson weed or james town we have lot many new terms today coming up so you can just take down your pen pencil notebook diary whatever you feel like and just keep on noting so we had lot of new terms we have lot of new scientist name let me just summarize the first one was palladona the next term was solanaceae family then we had nightshade shrub then we have uh, atropa and that was derived from atropos that which was a religious fate then balladona was due to the use of the beautification of the eye and then we have alkaloids they were atropine and scopolamine chemical nature of atropine is dextro levohyoxiamine and that is also found in datura stramonium the other term for datura stramonium is jimson weed or james town wow i did it so quickly that was a quick revision let's move further the next alkaloid is scopolamine it is chemically levohyoxine that is l hyoxine and this is found in the plant hyoxymus niger the other name of the plant is henbane h e n b a n e henbane so we have two names for each of the plant and both the thura and hyoxymus niger they are found in india that's a great discovery now the use of the jimson weed it was for some other purpose too long time back and what was that use that was a very interesting and ver- variety kind of use which actually you should know the roots and the leaves of this jimson weed jimson weed you remember the other name of the thura stramonium so the roots and leaves of this jimson weed they were burned and the inhalation of the smoke produced it was used as a relieving treatment therapy for the patients of asthma so that was a totally different kind of use from what we are actually studying this plants for but uh, since it was there it should be in our knowledge now what was that particular time when this use was done like burning of the leaves and smoking the inhalation for the treatment of asthma that was the time when the british rule was there in india and that was the time when britishers introduced jimson weed in the western medicine in around 1800s very interesting right now in the earlier 1800s atropine was extracted in the purest form from the weed so that wraps up the whole historical aspect of atropine i'm sure it was very novel and informative kind of historical aspect and very worthwhile to know because atropine is a very important anti muscarinic drug now we'll have a glimpse and talk over the historical story and aspect of anti cholinesterase inhibitors you know uh I'm sure you know the names of the drugs physostigmine neostigmine right so let's talk first about physostigmine physostigma venenosum is a perennial plant which was found in the tropical west africa the story has begun right do focus on the story when it is told in a story format it's easy to remember and it really creates a lot of curiosity and interest So physostigma venenosum was a perennial plant found in the tropical West Africa. Its ripe seed was dried and the seed was dried it was known as calabar or ordeal bean. I repeat calabar C A L A B A R calabar and the second name of that dried seed of this plant was ordeal bean O R D E A L B Now what was the use of this calabar or ordeal bean this was used as a toxin by the tribal people in some witchcraft activities so these are all age old kind of things you don't need to strain your brains on all these things let's move on the scientific part jobst and hesse j o b s t jobst and hesse these were the two scientists in the later 1800s 
they isolated the purest form of alkaloid from this plant which plant physal stigma venenosum and because it was derived from physal stigma venenosum the purest alkaloid form was termed as physal stigmine and the other name was eserine e s e r i n e these were the alkaloids obtained from the caribou or the ordeal bee i am sure you are able to relate well to the historical aspect now so that covers up one aspect of the story next let's get to know more about it the first therapeutic application of this drug was done in the glaucoma patients in the late 1800s and that was done by the scientist lacour l a q u e u r so the historical account of the physostigmine it was described by the scientist karsman and homsted at this description or the elaboration by karsman and homsted was done in the late 1900s and 2000s then after this elaboration there was a further a great chain of experiments research activities they were performed and many substituted aromatic esters of alkyl carbamates they were derived and synthetically produced so lot many experiments and researches were done in the earlier 1900s new stigmine was introduced it had excitatory effect on the gut and later it was it was propounded as a drug of choice for the treatment of myasthenia gravis that we all know so neostigmine was an important drug then thousands of compounds they were made synthetically it was found and discovered by the scientist schrader s c h r a d e r schrader now schrader propounded a special structural moiety to be present for the compound to possess insecticidal activity or insecticidal property so that was the contribution of schrader he said that only if when a certain chemical moiety is present then only the compound will behave as insecticidal the most early compound in this insecticidal series was parathion in this particular category it was widely used as an in- insecticide and the next useful compound in this insecticide series was melathion I'm sure you are well versed with these names we have done already. So what was their importance? Second World War, chemical warfare agents they were synthetically derived from Schrader's theory and concept and much more toxic compounds. Their name was sarin, suman and tabun. I'm sure you are well versed with these names also. They come in the classification. So sarin, suman and tabun They are highly toxic agents they were developed and they were secretly kept by the German government during the second world war That is all historical aspect now later what happened british and american scientists they widely studied the diisopropyl fluorophosphate which is famously abbreviated as capital DFP This DFP that is diisopropyl fluorophosphate it was developed by Mac Combe and Saunders they were again two scientists we have lot many scientists today you know a big list of scientists i'm sure you're noting down or everything in your your copy or diary or notebook whatever it is it's good to note down so that we can connect if we happen to create a timeline that would be a great fun activity and i will definitely try to do that and i would be presenting it this fun activity on the celebration of the international podcast day even if i'm not able to do fully whatever i'm able to connect as far as the timeline is concerned in this neurohumoral transmission history i will try to do that let's move on further so this was all the historical aspect recently what had happened the united states fish and wildlife service they have recognized the threats from melathion for the in around 78 in endangered plant and animal species this is highly supervised and monitored by the environmental protection agency 2021 this is a very recent thing it's of great general knowledge so that is you can again note down the environmental protection agency in 2021 it found that melathion was a great threat for about 78 endangered plant and animal species because it's a highly toxic compound 
right so that's all about the historical aspect of palladona from which we get atropine the present day drug and physal stigma venenosum from which was firstly derived physal stigmine then synthetic compounds like neostigmine parathion melathion etc they were all developed i hope you like this historical aspect and there were a long list of scientists who were working together in different eras and times to actually support this whole historical movement well what's next definitely we i have one more interesting episode coming up in this neurohumoral transmission which would be of great importance yes it's not a very long season it's the season 3 would be finishing off before september 30th and september 30th would be a kind of a fun activity of timeline whatever i'm able to do so and wishing you all a very happy international podcast day for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast please visit www.pharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences drug information updates and my podcast updates also you can follow me on different social media handles like twitter insta facebook and linkedin they all are with the same name is pharmacology difficult If you are listening for the first time do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode stay tuned do read and review on iTunes Apple podcast stay safe stay happy stay enlightened thank you